Come on, let's give God some praise just because we're here. Hallelujah. Wow, I ain't preached with a mic sitting on a podium in quite some time, man. All right. Just by when we, when we pull it up, look at all this stuff, because I can't just snatch it up like I was doing. I'm going to snatch it off and I'm going to blame everybody else. Amen. Let us look to the Lord. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, for allowing us to be here. We bless your holy and divine name and ask that you indeed have your way. And Lord God, I ask for a double portion of your favor. For those who are here, Father God, here on this Wednesday getting a booster shot, I ask you to bless surely the choir that came out. Father God, thank you. Bless their sacrifice. Lord God, you know about their sacrifice. So Lord, now I ask you to do, do more than what they're able, e even able to ask. I ask you to bless our seniors that are here as well. Those that are showing up, Father God, on social media, I pray that something will be said or done, that someone may come asking, what must I do to be saved? I pray right now, Father God, that you will expand the territory that's called Fairfield, that you will expand it and grow it, that you will add, surely, to this fold. And Lord God, I just thank you, Father, that you found me faithful and placed me in. I pray that you continue to allow your word to take a sin against you let let the, your word take up residence in our hearts that we will indeed have a fellowship of love and joy and peace oh lord let your spirit lord god let him be in us baptize us with your spirit and i pray right now father god for the fruit of the spirit to develop and to just be all around us all about us we want to be atmosphere changers now father god have your way today and we'll be ever so mindful to give you the praise because it's about you, Father God, not about anything else or anybody else. So, Lord God, we thank you for your word, your will, and your way. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you give God some praise right there one more, I, one more time and again? Amen. Glory to God. I'm just glad to be in the house of the Lord. You may be seated, surely, in the presence of the Lord. It's just good to be here. And, and I want to apologize in the front that I did not create a PowerPoint Thank God for some of the children. I've not seen them in a while, but we thank God for them. Amen. Give God some praise for our babies. Uh, amen. Come on, give God some praise for them. Amen. Listen, I promised the last time I taught that maybe it came to me. It, depend, it, it just hit me, Mother, that I used to preach. I used to preach. Um, I used to preach based on what that Bible, what the Bible study, what the Sunday school lesson was about. We write our own Sunday school material, and I used to preach based on that material. You knew, you knew in the front that if if, if I preached from the first chapter of Isaiah this Sunday, you knew next Sunday I'd be preaching from the second chapter of Isaiah. Oh, yeah. And right now we're studying in the book of Zechariah. Is that correct? And we're on chapter 8. Amen? Amen. So look at here. Our study today, very simply, 8th chapter of Zechariah. A portion of it. Amen? Amen. Zechariah, my beloved, this chapter actually is, this, this chapter is filled with some hope and it's also filled with restoration. It's the restoration of God's people. After a period of judgment, God promises to return to Jerusalem and bring it some peace. If we can't relate with that, my beloved, I'm telling you, I think we're missing it. I think God is doing something not just in Nashville or just in Tennessee or just in the nation. He's doing something in the world. And when we see the things that are going on in the world, perhaps if we would look at it from the perspective of what God is doing and what God has promised it might do something for us so if I could pull a thought for today if I could pull a text brother Emmanuel if I could pull a text uh, elder I would pull the thought the promises of God the promises of God if you're going through something and I don't know where you've been or what you're in or what you're about to get into but I do want to suggest real heavily that if you're in something a storm or coming out of the storm Keep your mind's eye on the promises of God. 
Oh, I wish I had half a church in here. I, I, I don't care what the children are doing. I don't care what the world is doing. I don't care what your finances are doing. What we've got to do, I, I, even if your life stage is at another level or getting to another, another level, we need to keep our minds eye on the promises of God. I just want to give you five points. I'm going to be through. He's going to play at the, at the, at starting at the fifth one. Listen, the first point I want us to understand and be clear on is restoration. In Zechariah, the eighth chapter, verse three, it reads, thus says the Lord. It's amazing when God's begin, when God began to speak, you need to stop, Brother Joe, and listen. When, when God speaks, we need to stop and listen. I don't care if I'm hurting. When God is speaking, I, I just... Had to get that out. And when they treat you that way, just, just, just hold your mule for a minute. Stop and pray for a minute. That's when you do a silent prayer. But if you hold your peace, if I had, if I had a song, I'd sing that. If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battle. Then the victory shall I have be mine. Victory shall I have be mine. And then they did that long. Victory shall be mine. That thing. Victory shall be mine. That's the that's the that's the that's the note of H. I understand as it's a do re do re mi fa so la ti do. I got that. However, this is this is the ninth one. This this. This H note is going to heaven. It's an H tone. Listen, listen, I'm almost through. I'm almost through. I'm almost, I'm almost, almost through. Believers, we are called, my beloved, to embody God's righteousness. Every day, all day. If I wake you up at 2 o'clock in the morning, you ought to exhibit the spirit of God. In fact, get into the habit of when you wake up in the morning open your eyes whether it's three four five seven or eight and say thank you god that you gave me another day i would sing this song if you would knew the key of h it's just another day that the lord has kept me it's just another day that the lord has kept me. Am I teaching? This is Bible study. This is what Sunday school has to be about. Are you hearing me? All I'm doing is teaching Sunday school right here. Our lives must reflect his truth in the world. Point four. Understand and be clear. In Zechariah, in Sunday school, we're going through the understanding of, of chapter eight. Y'all got to get in and enjoy it, that there's going to be restoration. There's going to be renewal. There's going to be some righteousness. And then there's going to be some rejoicing. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. The Bible says in verse 19. Am I teaching this thing? Verse 19 it says, thus says the Lord. Ooh, hey, hey. Zechariah ain't saying, I think this or I believe this. What he's saying is, this is what God has said. Now, everybody can have an opinion, my beloved, like they have a coconut. But listen, I need the word from heaven. Your opinion means absolutely nothing. Give me what thus saith the Lord. He said there's going to be some rejoicing going on. That means I got some joy, joy, joy down in my heart. Where? I said where? I don't care if it's storming outside. I still got some joy. I don't care if the whole world goes to war. I still have peace. I don't care if you think I ain't got no money. I'm still going to walk like I'm rich. The Bible says, thus says the Lord, verse 19. Am I, are y'all reading that with me? Verse 19, it says, thus says the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth month. The fast of the fifth. The fast of the seventh. And the fast of the tenth. Shall be joy and gladness and cheerful feasts for the house of Judah. Therefore, love, truth, and peace. There oh, should have been some shouting right there. I, I, I understand what the doctor says, but still there'll be some shouting right there. I, 
I understand what, 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 what you may have caught, but I understand what I've been captured. I've been captured with a love that transcends understanding. This is awesome. Man, fourth month fast. Man, fifth, seventh. Man, there's something going on here. This message tells us that God promises to turn times of mourning into times of rejoicing. Trump ain't going to last always. They want to tell you that if he lose, there'll be bloodshed in the street. Have they not read the news? They shooting down the masses in the street anyway. Blood been sh flowing in the... They shot down a 16-year-old just yet. Blood's flowing anyway. We might as well let it blow, flow for a purpose. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. And the blood still works. I'm enjoying myself. Do I act like I'm enjoying myself up in here? Oh. Jesus. A time of rejoicing. The fast that once marked sorrow will become occasions of joy and gladness. This transformation from sorrow to joy is a reminder, not just a it's a powerful reminder that God can turn your mourning into dancing. Our response to God's goodness should be a life of rejoicing, a life of celebration. And we're doing this in his presence. And when folk ask you, why are you rejoicing? Can't you see him? He's on my right. He's on my left. In front. In back. Over me. Under me. And he's living down inside. And, and when, when he, oh God, somebody, you ought to say when they ask you, why you got this hope you got, young lady? You look kind of different. Say, and he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. That's what keeps me. If folk would understand that, man, there's a, there's a shield and a buckler. That he's got me. All right, you ready? You ready? Because I, I missed my fourth point. I'm on my fifth for real. I'm done. Come, come on up. He, he going to play? Super Mario going to play? He will in a minute. Here's my fifth point. You helping him? All right, he's helping him. He's helping him. My fifth, so, so I'm going to give him the five all over here. The first point, the first point is what? That's some restoration. Anybody been restored? And he's restoring. He ain't done. Woo. Lord have mercy. Second point. He's renewing me every day. He's renewing me. I, I got a revival in my spirit. I, am being I got gray hair on my face, but I got some absolute joy. Long hair in my heart. Ain't nothing on top, but got long hair in the heart. <laughs> Listen. Third point. Righteousness. Is that right? Fourth point is rejoicing. We ought to rejoice and rejoice because you are the house of Judah. Lost tribe of Judah. Oh God to my I I Miss Lewis, I was I was I passed by some of my brothers in the purple outfits. And they were ministering on the corner. Right, and, and see, what they didn't know is that I've been to Demona, Israel, and hung out with the one who started the, the Hebrew Israelites. Sat down, ate with him, whole night schools, whole night. They ain't running around like that in Israel, but they, they got the whole community where they got the farms, yeah, they, got, they, they got the schools. And what, 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 what made me tear up, I went to Israel, and I was trying to get that, you know, you try to look for that feeling, I'm in the Holy Land. Whoa. I was... <laughs> I was looking for, I got put out of a meeting. Don't tell nobody. It was 2006. I got put out of a meeting. All that stuff. And so I said, I want to go to Demona. And they said, what? I said, yes, I want to go to Demona. And so I went to Demona. And when I got there, I saw these kids. And they had on their school uniforms. From all they had on school uniforms. One of them had on a red uniform. And another one had on a blue uniform. And they were hugged up and walking down the street. 
Y'all ain't catching me. In 2006, you wouldn't have kids in the school or anywhere else with a red uniform on and a blue uniform on, hugging each other, walking down any kind of streets or sidewalks, speaking fluent Hebrew and English. And they were that size, little bitty kids, hugging. See, I, I said, they, they, and as I, as I start crying, they said, why are you crying? And I, that's when I felt the spirit of the living God. That's when I felt the spirit of the living God. I said, we can't do that in, in the United States because Crips don't hang out with bloods. Because the enemy has caused a way to divide us and he can keep dividing us. But in this script, I find that we're coming together. I don't care what the world tries to do to divide you. In fact, I've discovered who's the one trying to divide you is the devil because he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He comes to sift you as wheat. But I hear God say, but I prayed for you that your faith faileth not. Quit talking about other folk. Quit talking about your family. Quit beating up on each other. It's time to love each other. It's time to come together. If ever before, if you've never done it before, forgive yourself. Forgive others. In the name of Jesus, the last point is redemption. Zechariah 8.13 it reads, and it shall come to pass that just as you were a curse among the nations, O house and house, you 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 gotta quit. You know that it is Amen. that we're better. We're all in this house together. Are you hearing me? There's no big eyes or little U's. It says, and it shall come to pass that just as you were a curse among the nations, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so I will save you, and you shall be a blessing. Do not fear. Let your hands be strong. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. The enemy will try to look at you and say, you're failing, you're failing, you're not failing, you're not failing, you're not failing. Who am I talking to? You're not failing. Just keep, keep pressing. Just keep pressing. You're not failing. You're not failing. You're not failing. You're not failing. What, two or three are gathered together, touching and agree? I'm in the midst and God can take two and turn the whole world upside right. Just be unified. Stay focused on the precious promises. God promises redemption. Turning his folk from a curse into a blessing. You've been taught that your complexion and that your association with, with African American Negro colored people is a curse. I'm coming to tell you the devil is a lie. That you have been a blessing to this country. And probably the only reason it's still alive is because of you. You got to decide today that you're going to be redeemed and let God redeem you and quit trying to associate or assimilate into the wicked structure and just witness what God has done. God has brought you from nothing and you're still here. There, God Almighty, can I tell you, if you would just stop and look at all that the world tried to do to destroy you and you're still here every institution has tried to destroy you but you're still here you're not even supposed to know that you're the sons and daughters of God all of that was supposed to be locked down and kept away from you but God says truth crushed to the ground shall rise again when I tell you, when I look at you, I see the resurrection of Jesus. I see Jesus in you. And our children need to know that their, their naps is the strength of the wisdom of God. And not see themselves as singers and dancers and football players or basketball players. But see themselves through the eyes of history as the builders of civilization. 
and the creators of every discipline that brought civilization into the planet. They need to see themselves as the sons and daughters of God. And since I'm coming out of the school system, I'm here to tell you the school system is not going to be your salvation. At least they should teach our children to read and count, but... or expelled and taught that they're, they're bad and being put on medication. We need to have our own individual educational program. We need to have our own IEPs right here. Our own conversation about who you are. And then when that happens, you'll see a whole new people emerging to give aid and comfort. Our sons will give aid and comfort to the daughters who need a good black man. But they got to know who they are and whose they are. And sisters, you don't have to attract folk, man, by your physical parts. Because time has a way of getting rid of all of that. But if you come in peaceful, come in pleasant, come in with the spirit of God, come in and ask a brother, you know, what's your mission in God? I know you messed up, but I just need to know what your mission is. Because I know that my mission as a woman, as a woman, is to be a help meet. And if a brother does not know his mission, then you can't help him meet what he doesn't know. And you're not just a piece of meat that he's going to actually tag and push with and play with. No, sir. You are a woman of God where God has indeed brought answers to prayers through. I'm preaching in here. And when we understand that, we will be the salvific nation that God has called us to be. God's promises, His promise of redemption, turning His folk from being a curse into a blessing. This redemption is not just my beloved for just those persons that they call themselves Israel but are not but really are the synagogue of Satan but I'm looking at Israel and it's you joke to teach the world a forgiveness down pat when it comes to this nation you've got to bring that forgiveness home mm. Mm. through Christ we have received this redemption being saved from sin becoming a blessing to others saved from sin not to walk with your nose in the air about I got this no but to help others along the way and, and I might not have a whole lot, but if I got a peanut butter jelly sandwich, I can cut a piece off and give you a piece of it. We received this redemption, saved to bless others. Our mission, my beloved, is to share this message of redemption to everybody. Did you get a word? You can take it. Hallelujah. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. This chapter. Come to Sunday school. Get into it. You got a little piece. You got a little jump on the others. Have you got me? When you get to Sunday school, dig, dig, dig it. Dig, did I do okay with chapter? <laughs> You're going to have me for Sunday. This chapter is filled with hope and promises of God. Restoration, renewal, righteousness, rejoicing, and redemption. Not just some of the past. That's our present situation. The word of God for the people of God. Let us all stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I might be able to preach with this thing right here. Is that all right? Yeah, I might be able to.
I'm going to break that wood off, though. Let us. Hey, listen, if you're here and you've not received Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you are here and have fallen away from the church, this invitation for you to come home is sincere and it's serious. You've heard a word. It's not an accident that you're here, not an accident that you're watching online. But God wants to get you in line with him. I pray that you will come. Stop letting the enemy fool yourself. You don't stop fooling yourself. You need to hear. You need to hear. Whether you're young or whether you're old. And if your mind is set on the junk of rap and you have no idea of the redemption of God, you're in trouble and you're trying to figure out why you're in trouble if you just stop and get into the word and get out of the world. God's got you. Can we stop for about 10 seconds? I want you to pray specifically about your situation. And listen, when you pray about it, surrender it all over to God. I don't care what it is. But in 10 seconds, I want you to drop it off. Let us pray. You got 10 seconds. In the name of Jesus, hear them. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you right now, Father God, to hear the prayers. Some are hurting, but some are surrendering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we touch and agree right now as you restore us, as you renew us, as you make us your righteousness, as you allow us, Father God, to be redeemed oh God and Jesus you're doing something in this place oh God you're doing something in this house and right now Father God I want to say thank you that you're taking us to a place that we've not even been before hallelujah hallelujah Lord let your spirit rest rule and abide Oh, God, you're doing something in this house. Continue, Father God, 
and we'll be ever so mindful to give you the praise. And Father God, we're going to extend the invitation that somebody needs to come. Whether they're watching online, somebody needs to say, hey, here I am, Lord God. Send me. Save me. Satisfy me. Oh God, have your way. Let the Savior do what he does. And I thank you, Lord God, for the healing. As we lift up those that are in the hospital, I connect up, Father God, with those that are praying concerning the loved ones in the hospital. Lord, we know you to be a healer. Those that are headed to the hospital, Father God. We know you to be a healer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, restore right now. Caregivers who are caring for their loved ones, give them strength. And Father, we thank you. We thank you for the unity of our elderly and our children as we unify around rejoicing in you. Give us joy and we'll be ever so mindful to give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The doors of God's church are open. If you're here today...